Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And where does the adventure take us today? Well, is it an adventure? Hiking the Appalachian Trail is an adventure. Hiking up to Machu Picchu is an adventure. Or is this just a day out? It's all life adventure, isn't it? Well, I'm here uh, down back again uh, near Gatwick. We're right by Gatwick Airport. And we're going to the Gatwick Aviation Museum, which I wanted to be doing, uh, want to do for quite a while. So uh, should be interesting. I got quite into aviation recently, really, especially through my friend Al, who's uh, really into sort of uh, World War II planes uh, and events and things like that. So it should be quite interesting. So uh, let's go inside and have a look around. <laughs> So we are in the main hangar, absolutely fantastic. I've got a map as well so I know which way I'm, I'm going. Oh, this is cool, you can, actually, <laughs> you can actually come into the plane itself. It's really helpful here, I think there's a lot of this museum really relies on charity and uh, what have you. A Hawker Seahawk FGA6. This is absolutely lovely, isn't it? Really impressive. This is really impressive. A Gloucester Meteor 7T7. We're right by the Gatwick Airport, of course, on the flight path, and there's a viewing platform where you can see planes straight taking off very well. Please do not climb. Royal Navy. Lovely. Incredible. I say we go, you know, sometimes I go out to Biggin Airport with uh, Al, my mate Al, who I mentioned just now, um, for, onto the Lookout Cafe so we can go and see the planes taking off in the old, some of the Spitfires. It's absolutely incredible. Rolls Royce. Ah, uh, Concord. A de Havilland Venom FB50 under renovation. So I imagine they take um, old planes and redo them up. These look like those pods from uh, The Phantom Menace. What a reference to have. Wow. It's actually really cool, some of the aircraft you can actually um, go into, which must be great for the kids. There's a couple of school parties here today. Um, Smell of oil though, a lot of smelling of oil. There we are, the incredible Hawker Harrier, the Harrier jump jet. Where it used to take off vertically, absolutely incredible. Isn't that amazing? Missile launchers, look at that. Am I sitting up there actually in the, uh, in the canopy? That'd be pretty cool. Isn't it? It's pretty cool. This is a English, uh, English electric lightning supersonic interceptor. A supersonic interceptor. Okay. See that? This is cool. If you get inside, which I'm going to do. Actually, 
let's try and do this. Okay. Let's go some crappy camera work. Oh. And there we go. Oh. In a cockpit. Pretty cool, isn't it? How cramped it was when you were flying these things. Absolutely cramped. You've got passengers' seats at the back. There you go. Mm. Lots of knobs. So the exhibition's just in the village of Charlwood, or just off the village of Charlwood, which we've done videos from before. And it's only £10 to come in, just £10. And you can become a member as well, so your donations help the, the museum. Very cool. We're going to go outside now and look at some of the aircraft they've got in the, um, in the field, which would be great. Amazing. I think... Yeah. big turbine my goodness look at that wow there's a little bit of wind out in the field but um it's fine oh, look at that look at that This does remind me of the North East Aircraft Museum where I, we did a paranormal investigation. I was, I was invited as a guest uh, to be one of the leaders of this uh, aircraft hangar up in the North East near um, South Shields, I think it was. And uh, yeah, it's very much that sort, of, that sort of vibe. Not saying about ghosts or anything, but just that sort of which reminds me of. Can we get inside? No, I don't think so. You can see very much inside there. How are you liking the day so far? I'm really impressed with this place, really impressed. And you can tell it's got that volunteer love. Uh, people who are friends of the, uh, of the museum, who contribute their time and effort. And they've really done a good job. It's absolutely amazing. I'd love to f this, this idea of a, of a plane just, <laughs> just there in the field, you know. It's lovely, isn't it? A bit. Oh wow, underneath it all. Look at that. So is this where they would have had bombs attached to drop down? I would imagine so. Look around here because I think I think I could be completely wrong. Yes, you can go up to the plane. So let's do that. British Airways. <laughs> first, uh, Mark One Shackleton, first through 1949, joined the Air Force in 51. Didn't last very long because the radar was a chin radar at the front, so mm -hmm. there was a big blank area at the back. So they rapidly brought in the Mark II, tailwheel version still. That obviously had restrictions with the tailwheel, hard to steer and all the rest of it. So they started developing the Mark III and the Mark III came in the mid fifties with a nose wheel, totally different system. Because of the nose wheel, the rebuilding of the airframe made it a bigger aeroplane. Therefore it was much heavier wasn't the range, so they gave us two tip tanks to try and improve the range and that and all the rest of it. Wow. Uh, which, of course, like an electric car, have to come up mm -hmm. and charge the batteries. Yeah. So, what... That's one of them sort of broaching, as they call it. He's got his conning tower just oh, coming see, yeah. up, you see. But normally you'd get something like that. 
Now that was in the med, so you can actually see the submarine under the water. Yeah, and the blue, blue water, of course. Yeah, <laughs> but the those things here would leave a trail. Right. And we detect that on radar. Right, okay. So our main system was tracking submarines in a known area, obviously. Yeah. Get a small contact like that, home onto it, disappears, we throw sonar boys at it. Hopefully we track it on sonar. Passive and active sonar. Passive sonar is there listening for cavitation mm -hmm. noise from the propellers. Active sonar boy, the ping, ping, ping. The things, that's a small version of it we're using the Nimrod. Mm -hmm. There's, we've got a picture of it there. It's about as tall as me, it's got a radio aerial, right. floats obviously, and a hydrophone drops out the bottom, either passively or actively. So, the galley. Or cooking not. area. Obviously, it looks like a restroom, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> ten, man, ten men for up to 14 hours food is a mm. lot of rations. Yeah. So this was the ration store, effectively. The only time it was ever used for, I never saw anybody do flying tours on these. And I never saw anybody ever lying down on the bunks, ever. So it was a storage area. The seating area, you sit where you the hot water, there's a cold water tank, you know, hot water sink, little hot water, hot air and being there, like TV dinners and mm -hmm. the like. Saucepan, grill. And we made a thing called Honker Stew. Honker Stew. There you go. Tins of everything. Two tins of stewed steak, uh, one large tin of potatoes, a tin of peas, carrots. Empty the lot into a saucepan, stir it all up in a nice old mash. And I'll tell you what, three o'clock in the morning when you've done 10, 12 hours north of Iceland, on your way home, it's a very nice That's breakfast. <laughs> it looks all right actually, doesn't it? That looks all right. <laughs> but this, when we used to go on detachment, we'd take our own ground crew with us. Mm -hmm. So they would sit on here for the transit and all the rest of it. So that was it. So then we go into a little galley area, a little dinette area into the main tactical area. Now, obviously this aircraft is 50 odd years, 60 odd years mm -hmm. old now, so she's getting a bit weary, a bit tired. So oh. that's where the radar operator would be. Mm -hmm. You saw the size of the targets. We used to operate that for 20, 25 minutes maximum because concentration levels are required. Mm -hmm. There'd normally be a curtain around the back obviously to keep them nice and dark, and that was it. This is a very basic ESM, electronic support measure. On the roof above my head, there's a thing that looks like a spark plug, mm -hmm. radar receiver. All it would tell you is you've been scanned by a radar and that's the bearing it was on. That's all it would tell you. So it's on a swivel, so if he's busy, somebody else can monitor from this side of it. So analog, isn't yeah, it? So oh, analog. <laughs> he's the guy, he's got a plot there, mm -hmm. five square miles of water. He's got all his equipment marked on it. He's got the boys in the water marked on it. He's got the bearings and things from the, the, the various equipment on there. He's got an arrow projected from above flying around the plot so you can see where the aircraft is. They would on top the sonar boys now every, as often as they can mm -hmm. to lock the plot, obviously. That was it. He's also the guy who releases the weapons, selects the weapons, releases the weapons. So him and the captain who's probably in the left-hand seat discuss what we're going to drop, mm. what the target is, have we got attack criteria, mm. etc, etc. That was Mike uh, showing me around, which is absolutely fascinating. Oh, look at this, look at this, the cockpit. Wow. This is where they would have done the weaponry. Look at that. I really do recommend this place, guys. I really, really, really do. We've got to climb over a few bits and pieces to uh, get to places. The old analog equipment, isn't it? Fantastic. This is all used in the Cold War. Um, ten man crew, this is the same. Thank you, Mike. If you ever see this video, thank you very much for showing me around. I'd say the passion of the volunteers of people who used to work in the Air Force is incredible. There's one more thing I want to do, is go and have a look at the inside of a Virgin um, Airbus 360. I think it's a Virgin Airbus 360, I think that's what it's called. Oh. Um, solid. Yeah. Wow. What a fantastic place.
sorry, it's called the Virgin A350. <laughs> Virgin Atlantic. I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic because I haven't been on an aircraft in three years. Next year, it's all happening. Um, and I do fly Virgin a lot. I like Virgin Airways. Yeah. Miss Maverick, born April 2019. Right, let's see how the first class live. famous I don't think I'd ever be able to afford first class. Even, even this mock-up is probably way beyond my expense. <laughs> yeah, oh I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting vacation vibes now. Into the galley. Where they make your nice dinners. Obviously this is a mock-up as you well know. Oh. Yeah. Little screen up there. Oh holiday vibes, holiday vibes. The plan is, the plan is next year is the Florida Keys properly. Um, oh look you can lie down, <laughs> love it. I've done it. Here's a question for you all. Has anyone actually ever flown first class? Keep bashing my bag on thing. Has anyone ever flown first class? Or even business, I'm sure business class people have, but has anyone actually flown first class? That'd be nice to know. So thank you, Virgin. We'll see you soon. I remember during lockdown they sort of stopped f flying into Gatwick. Is that uh, is that true? That's still only Heathrow now, or do they do come to Gatwick? So uh, yeah. So that was really interesting, Gatwick Aviation Museum, which I'm going to come back to, I think, and drag Al down here. I don't know if he's been here before or not, um, but I think he'll really like it because he's always going to Biggin Hill, as I say. Um, so yeah, hopefully there's a bit of wind in the air. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video from Gatwick Aviation Museum. Please like, subscribe, all that normal stuff. And as I said, if you have flown first class ever, do let me know, I'd be interested. We'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.